Hello, my name is Nathaniel Gilbert. I teach English composition and literature at Middle Georgia State University. One of my favorite passages of African American literature is from a short story by James Baldwin called Sonny's Blues. This is a story about the narrator trying to come to terms with his brother's love of jazz music and also his brother's drug addiction. The narrator is having a difficult time separating those two things in his mind. In the story, Sonny is arrested uh, for using and selling drugs. He goes to prison uh, then to rehab. When he gets out, he comes to live with the narrator and his family. Many years before, we learned that the narrator had promised their mother, who has now passed on, that he would always be there for Sonny. And now he's trying to make good on that promise. Many scenes in the story involve the narrator looking out of windows and describing what he sees. In my opinion, Baldwin is one of the finest American writers for scene description. In this particular scene, uh, the narrator is looking out of his apartment window onto the streets of Harlem, waiting for Sonny to come home. He's been, he's been out somewhere. And there's a street meeting going on below. It was strange suddenly to watch, though I had been seeing these street meetings all my life. So of course at everybody else down there. Yet they paused and watched and listened, and I stood still at the window. Tis the old ship of Zion, they sang, and the sister with the tambourine kept a steady, jangling beat. It has rescued many a thousand. Not a soul under the sound of their voices was hearing this song for the first time. Not one of them had been rescued, nor had they seen much in the way of rescue work being done around them. Neither did they especially believe in the holiness of the three sisters and the brother. They knew too much about them, knew where they lived and how. The woman with the tambourine, whose voice dominated the air, whose face was bright with joy, was divided by very little from the woman who stood watching her. A cigarette between her heavy, chapped lips, her hair a cuckoo's nest, her face scarred and swollen from many beatings, and her black eyes glittering like coal. Perhaps they both knew this, which was why, when as rarely they addressed each other, they addressed each other as sister. As the singing filled the air, the watching, listening faces underwent a change the eyes focusing on something within. The music seemed to soothe the poison out of them, and time seemed nearly to fall away from the sullen, belligerent, battered faces, as though they were fleeing back to their first condition while dreaming of their last.